recorded live in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Trivial Warfare. More than just a pub quiz, Trivial Warfare is your gateway to a worldwide trivia community. Join your hosts, Jonathan. We just described Ric Flair as the NFL <laughs> man and player of the apes. <laughs> Carmella. That would irritate the hell out of me. I'm like, I just want my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> my ice cream is melting. <laughs> Ben. Ben. Four halogens in this? It was, oh my god. You're like, it's not the halogens. I'm like, no, Ben, no. Those damn halogens got me again. Aaron. I haven't started cooking more, but I have started thinking about cooking more, so I've looked at a lot of recipes for things. Mostly mostly cocktails. Zakia. I'm a very happy evil genius. Yeah. And Nick. For all the listeners out there, if you spend enough money, you can be where I am today. <laughs> and the rest of the Trivial Warfare Army for another week of fun and games. Now here's your host, Jonathan Oaks. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub quiz out of the pub and brings it home to you. My name is Jonathan and I'm here today with Zakia Mendoza. Hello, Zakia. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually way better than anybody expected. So we just had. Before we introduce everybody, I want to tell you we just had a fabulous time in Denver. This is the week after our Denver trip. We missed you. Would have loved to have had you there. Yeah. Uh, but we had a great time, and out of the forty or so people who were there, only three of them got COVID, which is. <laughs> Pretty good rate, honestly. I was one of those, unfortunately. But here I am a week later doing well. So we got that going for us. Look at you, resilient. <laughs> so, I'm so strong. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, and amazingly, Sarah, who was there with me the whole time and has been here with me the whole time, not sick, not even close uh... to sick. Freaking Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, so amazing. But we had the best time for you guys who thought about coming and didn't get to make it we're so sorry people are already talking about where we're going to go next year and uh, i have no idea but uh, there are some attractive options out there we will share everything as soon as we know but uh, we love getting to bring people together and getting people a chance to meet each other and see each other so we will continue doing that because it is awesome Agreed. Dane made me promise to shut everything else happening in July, save our son's birthday, so we can do the takeover next year. <laughs> so, yes, we'll be there. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's introduce our guest today. First up, Tony DePhillips is with us today. Hello, Tony. Hello. Good day, Jonathan. Good day, sir. GK Little is with us. Hello, GK. Hi. 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 And Jordan Smith is with us. Hello, Jordan. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. All right. I want to get to know each of you a little bit better. Tony, we're going to start with you. Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. My name is Tony D. Phillips. I'm just south of Scranton, Pennsylvania, in a little town called Duryea. Um, I'm a high school biology teacher by trade. And something interesting with that, you know, high school biology teacher, I'm trying to, you know, get to some of the historical things. I've met James Watson, the co-discoverer of the, the structure of DNA. Last cool. year, I was able to walk in Gregor Mendel's gardens. I was in Europe and in Bruno, Czechia. His gardens are there in the Czech Republic. And I was able to visit and got a personal one-on-one -on -one tour with one of the university students and hopefully getting to the Galapagos Islands for Charles Darwin's work soon. How many fruit flies did you find in the garden? He really didn't do the fruit flies. The fruit flies didn't come in until a couple of decades later as they started to be used. He used peas. Um, oh, he was and peas. Actually, he was the peas. And he is also a lot into bees. I think he just liked rhyming things. But Bees and peas, baby. <laughs> so I got to see his beehives. I got to see his pea plants. I mean, maybe not his. I'm, I'm assuming it, uh, maybe they are the same lineage, maybe. but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
That is, I, you know what, Tony, I absolutely love that because as a teacher, as a, as a person who's educating for you to have firsthand experience with some of the topics, some of the major topics that you're going to be sharing with people. I think that is absolutely brilliant. And that's a really cool way to spend, to spend your energy. You know, that's kudos to you. I can use my real pictures. And unfortunately, James Watson turns out to be a, you know, kind of a garbage human being, but at least I can tell my students, you know, he was smart here, but don't listen to anything else he has to say. Hey, see, you wouldn't know that if you didn't meet the turd. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, it is great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. GK, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. Hello, I am GK. I am from the northern half of New Jersey, and I am a government contractor by day and a budding thespian by night. Something fun about myself, I did not attend Denver. I'm sorry, but I really wish I could have, but it was the same weekend as the gaming convention I run, which I just realized I'm celebrating 10 years doing that. So... Wow! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 weird because it doesn't feel like 10 years. And technically, I am counting the COVID years as in the 10 years because that totally counts. It's it's a thing. My con family and I have been together for 10 years and it's been amazing. So, it counts. It totally counts. So, you got to tell us what's the name of the conference or convention, sorry, the convention. So, the, the technically there's two a year. The one in July is called Dexcon. And it it's, happens in Morristown, New Jersey, twice. A, and then there's one Dreamation that happens in February twice a year. And I run the uh, organized play section, which is the D and D, the Pathfinder, the what else is around? Ellis Legend of the Shining Jewel. We used to have Shadowrun at one point, but I stopped running Shadowrun. So it's it's it, it's a fun time. But I really I will get to next year hopefully, like. I really fingers want to crossed to denver or the takeover <laughs> yeah i don't it won't be in denver next year we're, we're all denvered out but uh, wherever we okay. are we will surely let you cool. know i when you said gaming convention i assumed you meant like board games but it sounds like you're talking about role-playing games oh it's ta all tabletop games board games i run the organized play section so i just run one that section but there are board games there is larping there is warhammer and mini games there is everything pretty much but video games that's very very cool well i am glad that you have that experience 10 years of doing anything leads to a lot of really really awesome friendships so good on you mm -hmm. all right yeah, true statements and jordan tell everybody where you're from what you do and something fun about yourself so i'm from baltimore maryland we're all east coast i think this this episode so I'm a warehouse coordinator and a container tracer. So I work for the Port of Baltimore and things like things that involve anything that comes overseas. I get my hands in. Something fun about me is when I'm not doing that, I'm a Ghostbuster part time. So I work with two different charity groups. I work with Ghostbusters Virginia, who is a 501c nonprofit. And most recently, within the last year, the Chesapeake Ghostbusters has formed. So they are Southern Maryland. We have some guys on the Eastern Shore. So we were just in the D.C. National Fourth of July Parade. We got to walk in that, and that was very cool that they asked us to. That is tremendous. How how did you get into it? Well, I think you've told me before, but remind remind the people who are listening who haven't heard. So I just really loved the movies growing up. I hated it at first. I was like, this is so dumb when I was like eight. I was like, mm, I don't like this. It just, it grew on me. I watched the cartoons. I uh, watched the movies again once I got older. And it started as a Halloween costume. Mm -hmm. I met some people at conventions because I wore it to conventions. And it just, it fell into place from there. And when I can do something that I like, like dress up and do things, and it supports charity, it's even better. So, and what I've met some think? great people doing that. What did you think of the most recent movie? I, I enjoyed it. We got to go up to New York to for the premiere. So we Whoa. Yeah, it was it was really cool. A bunch of different franchises got um invited up to New York to go see the firehouse. They iced it over for the premiere and it was it was cool. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think I liked Afterlife a bit more, mm -hmm. but it was good. I I loved Afterlife. It was tremendous. And I have seen that fire station. There was a definitely a cool thing to go find. 
All right. Well, I am so glad that all of you are here. We are going to have a great time, and we're going to get started right now with Warm It Up, Chris. It's time to warm it up. A trivial warfare today. And there's only one person who can warm it up for the TWA. And that's Chris. And sometimes Jonathan. Hey, and today's Chris Hollister is Zakia Mendoza. You are you are truly the best Chris. Oh no, Chris Hollister is the best Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I wasn't including him in the mix. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. then Chris Pine, then Evans, cool. then mm-hmm. no, Hemsworth, no, no, then Pratt. That that's the definitive Chris ranking. Wow, <laughs> but Hollister's yeah. on top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hollister's, yeah, he's number what? one. Good to know. Good to know. But today's warm it up, Chris. Is I'm going back to keeping it simple, stupid. And last time I did largest cities in North America, we're going to do largest cities in the world. I think this is good to do every so often because it is these these things change, and we need to stay on top of it. Yeah, I'm going to be bad at this. I have a feeling, which is good. I need to learn this. Well, I guarantee you that you've heard a lot of these cities. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a list of the top 30, but we can just do the top 25, maybe top 20. Just go Let's a couple rounds. Let's do top rounds. 20. All right, top 20. Sounds good. I have randomly selected an order. And Jordan, you're up first. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. Okay. What was it again? The largest cities in the world. Oh, okay. Largest cities in the world. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. New York City? New York City is on this list. We're, Absolutely. We're just, yeah, it is number 11. Nice job. Jonathan, you're up. You're up? I thought you said the world. You're up in my <laughs> nice Midwestern accent. <laughs> you literally said to me, Jonathan, you're up. <laughs> Y-E-R. You're yep. You're up. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go in the Southern Hemisphere and take a guess at Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is number four on the list. Nice wow. Job. GK. Now, this is by population or by area? So this is by UN population estimates, which takes in consideration Metro area, city proper, and n- not so much the actual area of the city. Then uh, I'm going to guess Beijing. For sure. Beijing. Yes. Beijing is number eight on the list. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Tony. I do remember you talking about the largest cities in North America. So I'm going to choose from that list and say Mexico City. Mexico City, the largest city in North America, is number five. Nice job. Jordan, back to you. Um, Los Angeles? Los Angeles. Number, okay, it, it's not officially on this list. It's 23. Ooh, okay. just off the edge. That's a <laughs> nice off. piece for us to understand where the, where the cutoff is, too. Mm-hmm. Jonathan, you're up. All right, that means Los Angeles is bigger than Chicago, so Chicago's not there. I don't know if Toronto's bigger or smaller, so I'm kind of scared of it. So I'm going to go out into Asia because there seem to be bigger cities there, and I'm going to say Mumbai. Mumbai is number seven on the list. Nice All job. Right. Okay, GK. I was going to say Mumbai. <laughs> um, all right, so I don't know if this counts. But I'm going to say Singapore. Singapore is not on the list. All right, Tony. Well, we have two countries that are, you know, with the most population. So I feel like I should be, you know, getting into there a little bit more. So let me say Shanghai. Shanghai is number three on the list. Nice job. All right. Jordan. Yes. I'm (laughs) going to go Tokyo. Tokyo is number one on the list. Nice. Um, Okay. (laughs) Jonathan. 
How about Bangkok? Oh, I would see Squirrely Squirrely if Bangkok is on this list. I remember Bangkok is- being like one of the highest metro line usages. And so I think it's really, really big. It's big, but not on this uh, top 20 big. Okay. I, not t- even top 30, but it is big. Whoa, I'm sure. wrong then. Big wrong. <laughs> Just a little big wrong. <laughs> <laughs> GK. Which song do I want to choose? Let's see. I think I'm going to go with London Calling. Da, 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 da. No? Can't remember the rest of the oh, lyrics. <laughs> yeah. London is not calling. Um, it is not on this list. Whoa, but, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. That's huge. Mm-hmm. All right. Tony. I'm sticking with my plan from before. I'll switch countries, though, and I'll go for New Delhi. Delhi is number two on the yeah. list. <laughs> 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 All the biggies. All right, Jordan. All right, we're running out of we're running out of cities for Jordan here. That's <laughs> bigger than Los Angeles. Jonathan, did you say Toronto or no? I did not try. I didn't try Toronto. Okay, I'm going to try Toronto. No, Toronto's not on the list. No, oh, it's I, close I do, though. Yeah, it's close. I love Toronto, but not on the list. Jonathan, you're up. Soul. Ooh, soul. Come on. Come on. Not, not, no, not really? soul. Really? Scrolling, scrolling. Not soul. I thought that was, I thought my last two answers were really good answers. They were some of the ones I wrote down first. I mean, I think soul is a good answer, but not not on here. But there, once you hear these, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. Tony, I told you I didn't have soul. <laughs> All right, GK. Istanbul was Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. Then. Sorry, I had to go with the other song. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good song to go with. It's number 15. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Tony. All right. Um, I'm really at the end of my list after a couple of decent ones, but um, let's, let's, let's. Let's take one stab at a different continent here. I'm going to say Kinshasa. Kinshasa is so close. It's number 21. Oh, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you may not be given it, but I'll take it. <laughs> it is so close. All right. This is our last round, everybody. <laughs> Jordan. Yes. Okay. Well, Russia's pretty big. So, Moscow? Not Moscow. I, I thought you were going to go with another song, oh. like GK style. Have you heard? There's a rumor in St. Petersburg. Petersburg. That would also be wrong, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're too cold. No big city. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, you're up. I I feel like my own list has is, is not been helpful. I feel like I, I was trying to go with um, Asian and Southeast Asian countries, I felt like those were going to be right. Um, now I'm kind of thinking maybe African cities. I'm going to try Nairobi. Nairobi is not on the list. I'm so bad at this for no good reason. Uh, however, African cities, or at least one African city is not a bad guess for our two remaining sure. guesses. What think about what is the largest city in on the continent of Africa? I don't know. <laughs> GK, do you know? <laughs> I, I I will say I knew I was in Nairobi in September, and it's definitely not one of the biggest cities. But there is one. There's two African cities going through my mind right now. One mm-hmm. in the north, one in the south, mm-hmm. and <laughs> I'm probably there's no song to go with it though. So, I, I, but uh, uh, Johanna, is it Johannesburg? Is that the one in South Africa? The one of the three capitals in South Africa. Are you looking for Cape Town, maybe? Cape, t- yeah, maybe Cape Town. It begins with a J, though, doesn't it? Oh, I'm Johannesburg is the, the one that begins with a J. Yeah, I'm debating that or Cape Town. It's going to be one of the two. Which one is the which one is the, the where the president lives? There's, there's like three unofficial capitals in South Africa. I think I think that's the they country got Pretoria, where there's like three unofficial capitals. There. 
You got Bloemfontein. That's the other one. I'm going to go with Johannesburg because that was my first gut guess. And it's probably going to be Cape Town. And that's what Zakia is going to tell me after we're all done with this round. <laughs> and I'm going to regret it. And I'm going to be so upset. Actually, none yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tony. What do you all have? Right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I have nothing there. So I'm just going to default to another world capital, Paris. Paris is not in the top 20. Oh. It's number 28. So, friends, what we are going to learn here is that there are a lot of Chinese cities on this list. <laughs> was Jakarta on the list? Jakarta was number 30. Mm. So, Rio? Rio de Janeiro was number 19. Oh. Oh, I was going to guess the girl from Ifunita was from Rio. Niger? <laughs> So no, we'll we'll go through it. We'll go through it. All right. So number six is the largest city in Africa, the one in the north. GK, were you gonna say Cairo? <laughs> is Cairo yeah. the biggest city in Africa? Yep. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. It is Cairo. You didn't say number nine, which is Dhaka in Bangladesh. I think one of the most densely populated countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Number 10 is Osaka in Japan. Oh. Yeah. Number 12 is Karachi in Pakistan. Number 13 is Buenos Aires in oh, Argentina. Come on, I can't believe it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the Asian capitals, the Asian uh, cities were going to be more populous than the South American ones. Well, um, there's still some Asian ones yeah, to go. Sure. <laughs> Num number 14 is in Asia, is Chongqing in China. Number 16, also in Asia, Kolkata in India. Mm. Number 17, also in Asia, Manila in the Philippines. God bless it. Number 18 is the other African city that was on this list, Lagos in Nigeria. I was trying to think of it, and I, I said the wrong one. And number 20 is Tianjin in China. So, yeah, that, that's our top well, 20. <laughs> well, y'all, we did bad. We did bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. No points were, no points were taken away. We're fine. We're fine. We've learned something today. We need to look at our world capitals more closely. World, not even capitals, cities. A lot of them weren't capitals. Yeah, just look at more Asian maps, maybe. <laughs> Those are big cities. Big cities. Need more love. Good job, Zakia. Thank you. All, all right, y'all. We're going to have some fun today. This is episode number 490. We are on the road to 500. We're getting really close now. We're at 490, and we're going to have a great time today. Uh, this is going to be on our main feed, so I want to say thank you to everyone who is listening. If you want more Trivial Warfare, there is lots, lots more. There are exactly 489 main episodes more. You can get access to a lot of them at TrivialWarfareArmy.com. Sign up as a sergeant or higher and get started listening to that backlog. Uh, today's game is going to be Jordan and GK versus Tony and Jonathan. Zakia is hosting, and it's time to play the game. Play us. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. This is Mr. Literature himself, cordially inviting you to the game. This is six rounds of trivia goodness. Three questions per round. Every right answer gets you 10 points. In the middle, we'll take a pause for the cause and ask a midpoint question worth up to 20 juicy points. After round six, you can wager any or all those points you've been building up and take a shot at the final round. It's a series of theme-based questions we call the gauntlet. It's just that easy, baby. But this game ain't gonna play itself, players. Let's get it on. All right, friends, two bits of information before we start this game. One, I wrote this game when I was extremely tired. I did have Dane play test it, <laughs> oh, no. but if things go <laughs> off the rails, I am so, so sorry. A second a line of business, Dane, I hope you are listening. This is me. 
GK is GK. <laughs> so last time GK were, and I were on an episode together, Dane texted me saying, GK sounds just like you. Just like, just what? like from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> My husband said the exact same thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're, we do sound it, quite a bit alike. It, we do, but it's it's it, like we're hearing us now, and you may not think of it. Just listen back, recorded. Yeah, like we're we're like bizarro each other. So Dane, this is Z. GK is GK. Hi, I love you. Thank you for playtesting this. You're the best. Yeah, I love you so much. Dane, they're <laughs> lying. That was GK <laughs> with you. You, I, it, it absolutely. She just told her to say that. Gave her a script. I saw her read it from the chat. We are evil, <laughs> evil, evil. All right, <laughs> round one, question one. Your category: the barefoot contessa. You can't give me the name of the beloved longtime partner of Food Network star Ina Garten. The name of the longtime mascot of Toys R Us will do just fine. Oh, I can do that. I got meow meow. Oh, now I got a camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. Well, they had meow meows. I, I, I meow meowed for them. Uh, I got to look at our <laughs> chat. Where the hell's our chat? Yes. Yes. I'm there too. <laughs> I guess yes. we. that's the only name we need. I oh, they, I, I assume because uh, it sounds we're talking. Hold on, about Tony. It. You yeah, guys locked clearly. in with your meow meows. Yeah. Okay. Great, Tony. Okay. It sounds like a first name to me, so I don't know if it's a last name in this case because I have no idea who's married to um, the barefoot contessa Ina Gartner. But yeah, there's only one giraffe I know the name of, and that giraffe is Jeffrey or Joffrey. Maybe he's King Joffrey, and we have a problem with Toys R Us now. <laughs> Well, you know, some wine or whatever will, you know, be able to take care of that problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's not Joffrey then or Jeffrey, I mean, it's that's it. It's Jeffrey. All right. I'm with you. We're going to guess Jeffrey. GK, I saw you raise your finger. Talk to me. So, I live 10 minutes from the world headquarters of Toys R Us. Of Is it as shoddy as their stores? Yes, but that's beside the point. Uh, uh, and and outside on their lawn they have one specific giraffe one and and in the in the I, the uh oh my god why can't i live also a half hour from that big mall that they just opened up near the meadowlands american dream thank you and what my Dusty friend, roads. my, my husband my husband friend my husband's friend is actually jeffrey the giraffe mascot at the American Dream Mall, that's what he does for a living. He dresses up as Jeffrey and takes pictures with the kids. So, yeah, we like to with Jeffrey as well. <laughs> wow. But is he friends with Ina Garten? Because oh. the correct answer is Jeffrey. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I really hope that there is a road leading into the American Dream Mall called Dusty. Because Dusty Roads is the American dream, and you cannot name <laughs> something else the American dream without giving reference. So, so they really miss. So Jersey really, really missed it because the American Dream Malls in the Meadowlands, and both the Giants and the Jets play in the Meadow Meadowlands, and they missed the chance to have the Jets way. The uh, Jets way. Get Jet way. Jets way. Get it. Yeah. Get it. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. That joke mm-hmm. was much worse than mine. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Round one with joke ranking. <laughs> Round one, question two, your category. Put the name down, flip it, and reverse it. DNL was a flavor of what brand of lemon lime soda owned by Keurig Dr. Pepper? DNL was in stores from 2002 until its dis- discontinuation in 2005. All right, my autocorrect's really aggressive. <laughs> that's a great autocorrect. <laughs> I think that's the best autocorrect. Oh, oh, you're <laughs> going to have to share with the class when, <laughs> when that I'll is I'll let available. Jordan do it. Okay. I will let Jordan do it. <laughs> what, really? Care to explain why? Love it. Uh, we're locked in. 
All right, GK, uh, I like Seven Up. Um, I, I remember different flavors of it. I don't think I've seen it in stores recently, but they changed Sierra Mist to Starry because mm. the whoever owns Sierra Mist, I think it was Coke, Coca Cola Company. Somebody they they tried to get an influencer named Sierra Mist. That was literally her name to change her Instagram name, and it turns out they didn't renew the copyright, and she bought the copyright to Sierra Mist so she could keep her name, and that's why they changed it to Starry. But this is like 2000, early 2000s, which makes me think of 7-Up because it, the early 2000s, I believe the cranberry flavor for 7-Up was premiered sometime around there, which is the only reason why it's ringing a bell and why I'm okay. thinking 7-Up. By the way, you need to you need to tell everybody about that perfect autocorrect because it totally, totally reminded me of a song. <laughs> yeah. So GK uh, mentioned 7-Up and I was like, I, I wanted to say, is 7-Up still around? And my autocorrect went, is 7-Up still around the clock? So. <laughs> and then I'm thinking like around the clock tonight. Around, 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 around. So that was funny. Anyway. But I think it's 7-Up. I don't think it, because right, you're looking for the brand, not the company that owns the brand, right, Sikia? Looking for the brand. I don't know what else to go with. That's the only other lemon lime soda I know of, other than Sprite, which is Coca Cola. Yeah, I like Seven Up. Let's go with that. Okay. Jordan and GK say Seven Up. Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? I clicked on a random notification on my phone, and I just want to share with you what came up. The picture of that picture. Hey! That picture <laughs> of me and a gigantic Miss Piggy showed up on my phone. <laughs> I, I I have no I have no idea when or what that was. My life is a fever dream. <laughs> okay, Tony, talk them through talk them through our conversation, man. Well, yeah. So you know, we got to start with the category name down, flipping and reverse it. So we got Missy Elliott. So we got to start playing on that. Is she connected to any soda brands at all? Um, you know, I came up with a wonderful guess of Misty Elliott because I'm there like, no, no, Zakia's hints are, are are way more on there. Jonathan, of course, you started putting in some, you know, guesses of an actual soda like this, you know, Sprite and you know, Seven Up and Squirt. And it wasn't until we started seeing those and then. What but I noticed, and I do have to say for those listening to this podcast, the written version of this question, the name of the soda DNL was lowercase d, lowercase n, capital L. And I focused in on that. I go, that's different. That's weird. That's not a typo. It's, you know, very specific. And once Jonathan put, I think 7up is independent and in like, you know, in the chat right below it. I see the DNL and realize that we got to flip it and reverse it. DNL upside down is seven UP, seven up. So we uh, <laughs> look at their faces. <laughs> oh my God. That's, oh my, that's brilliant. Oh my God. That's beyond brilliant. Oh my God. I love you as a question writer, Zakia. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not even me. Thanks the good people and curing Dr. Pepper because the correct answer is seven up. DNL was cooked up as like a Mountain Dew competitor and it was disgusting. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven up is a correct answer. Nice job, both teams. I wish I had the screenshot of y'all's reaction <laughs> to that reveal. Both of you jaw dropped, <laughs> smiling and shocked at the same time. And that I had was a amazing question too, because once you realize it, it's like that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Round one, question three. Your category, your Jill Cal effing Zaggy. I'm sorry. Hmm. What? Whoa. <laughs> what? I don't even know what the heck you said. Zaggy, Jeff called. Your Joe Cal. <laughs> Joe Calzaghi is a person, and there's a uh, song lyric that calls him Joe Cal F-word, Zaggy. So I am just doing some censoring. Your category, your Joe Cal effing Zaggy. What is the name for the normal stance for left-handed boxers with the right hand and right foot forward? Same. Same. Do you want to lock it, Jordan? I'm not going to come up with anything better. 
Me neither. We're locked. Okay, Jonathan and Tony, you guys can talk it out. So both of us immediately think of baseball. Left-handed pitchers are known as southpaws. Tony pointed out that it's uh, left-handed stance in skating or surfing is called goofy foot. Well, I don't even know. It's just uh, yeah, some idea that I've heard that like if a different foot is forward, mm-hmm. sinistra, sinister. You have as the the root. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember the reasoning why, but I remember like the left-handed side. There, there's some Latin in there, yeah. and it's sinister. Is left is is the root the root of sinister is like left-handed or something. Um, I don't think I've heard, you know what? Maybe I have maybe in a boxing game, like, God, I haven't played any boxing games in 10, 15, 20 years though. So yeah, no, I'm 47. I haven't played any boxing games in like 25, 30 years. Damn. That feels bad. (laughs) Do Do we have any idea who Joe Calzaghe is? Because I'm assuming that effing, of course, is not part of that. You're Joe Calzaghe. Is that a movie reference? Is that a sports uh, guy? Is that a, does he have a nickname? I've never heard that phrase or reference at all. Slewfoot or something like that. <laughs> I, I think you're, pull, you're pulling out drag race references for me right now because <laughs> sure okay that, are they left handed <laughs> drag race references that's a, yeah that, that's been that's been a, a queen's trademark on uh, on the recent um, all stars is, is it race. really yeah it is I have no idea what the connection is because I don't think I actually looked up what that meant because like a lot of their lingo I just go oh okay that's just what they say and I move on with my life Joe Calzaghe spelled C-A-L Z A G H E, Joe Calzaghe. I mean, it, okay. It sounds like, uh, honestly, I don't know what exactly the reference is, but it sounds like, you know, movie plot kind of thing or a dramatic mm-hmm. scene, and you're trying to encourage somebody, right? Um, yeah, you're Joe Blank Calzaghe. Did she Get say something? And- did she say something about about it being? a reality star at the beginning or did I just make that up in my head? I don't remember. No, you're at time. Just go back to our Southpaw. That was both our first instincts. Sure. We'll say Southpaw. Jonathan and Tony said Southpaw. Jordan and GK. What did you say? We went back and forth because all of our knowledge is from the Wii or Super Smash Bros or Knockout. So uh, we went with Zigzag. (laughs) Joe Calzaghe, I believe, is a professional boxer. Yes, GK. Joe Calzaghe is a professional boxer. And both Joe Calzaghe and Manny Pacquiao are left-handed. And their stance is not orthodox, but southpaw. Oh, that's right. (laughs) That's That's right. Oh, my God. Wow, I'm glad we went back to the basic, Tony. I I mean... (laughs) We didn't really have another. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we got we got really lucky there that those are the same things because for us, just in baseball, a standard term for a left-handed pitcher is a southpaw. That's which is that's where that came from for us. Which is so funny to me because I, I think of southpaw as boxing, and if you ask me what a left-handed pitcher would have been, I'm like, sure, I may have called it a southpaw, but yeah. Fun, fun with round one. <laughs> so at the end, Jonathan and Tony, you have 30. Jordan and GK, you have 20. Did Dane get that? Yes, he did. Yeah. Good job, Dane. Yeah. Round two, question one, your category, science with Smitty Werben Jaeger Man Jensen. Science, science. with Smitty Jaeger Mansion Jensen Panson. Yeah. <laughs> This lightweight gas is the only element on the periodic table with an isotope that does not carry any neutrons. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was going to suggest that before you did, but you beat me to it, so I'm good to go with that. Yeah, I'm good with locking that. All right, we're going to lock okay. it. Okay, cool. Jordan GK can talk it out. Okay, GK. My periodic table knowledge? Not great. Uh, I know about the noble gases, good. that's about it. Yeah, so the only one that I can think of that would have no neutrons is hydrogen because it's got literally one of everything. But I don't 
it's the only element on the periodic table with isotope. This is not carrying uh, the f- hydrogen would be my only one because it's number one. So okay. that'd be that'd just be my guess. That's because I isotope that does not carry any neutrons. I'm gonna guess. I'm I would guess hydrogen because it's number one. That's 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 the only reason. <laughs> and it is gas. I like it. <laughs> okay, we'll lock in with hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll promise I'll explain my face in a second, GK. <laughs> Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? You don't have to explain your face. Don't ever let somebody pressure you into explaining your face. Oh, but I want to. So. Oh. <laughs> you know, Tony, I thought that the, it uh, this this was clearly going to be the answer because it loaned the neutron to the Pointer Sisters. Uh, they needed it to do the neutron dance, clearly. Oh, okay. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> um, and, and at this point, I think uh, we just chose to ignore whatever was happening in the topic. We accepted science and then just went nope with the with the category name there. So hydrogen, um, it's number one on the periodic table. It's a lightweight gas and it has a lot of isotopes and one of them doesn't have a neutron. So we said hydrogen. Okay. So GK... This also explains the the category a bit. You kept saying, it's number one. It's number one. The Smitty Ruben Yeager Van Jensen is from SpongeBob. And <laughs> anyone knows, it's Smitty Ruben Yeager Van Jensen. He was number one. <laughs> Referencing the first element on the periodic table, your correct answer is hydrogen. Did, is that truly a situation where, as everybody knows... <laughs> very tired when I wrote this game. No, 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 no. I just mean just now. (laughs) Just now. You said, and as everybody knows, it's smitty diddy 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 diddy. I am still tired. (laughs) Do do you know, though, I did closed captioning for Nickelodeon for several years. Yes, I do Uh, know. Like, like, how did I not know that reference? (laughs) That was as bad as the last the, the one thing from the last episode I recorded, of which Ziki and I sounded exactly alike, was Loud House. I, that that still angers me that I took me that long to get that answer when I worked on that show. Well, after that episode, I when I looked up Loud House and I realized it takes place in Royal Oak, Michigan. I I, I, I feel like I'm required to know everything, every bit of media that's t- set in the state of Michigan. And I felt really bad about that. So you're not yeah. alone, voice twin. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, question two, your category, honor among Thebes. Thebes, T-H-E-B-E-S. Mm-hmm. Like Daenerys Targaryen, this queen had many titles, including hereditary princess, great of praises, sweet of love, lady of grace, lady of the two lands, and the great king's wife, the king in question being Eknaten. Oh, 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 mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I have to remember how to spell, how do you spell the name? Yes, yes, the the last one, Zukia, that locked that one in, yes, 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 yes. yes. Jordan, yes. that autocorrect. It is so specific. <laughs> You're going to explain that one too. You guys are locking in that last answer, though. Yes. That king name looks Egyptian. It looks Pharaoh like. Which one? In the question, oh, uh, the great yeah, king. Why, why wife, wouldn't the this king... be? If that's the case, why not? Why not uh, Cleopatra? Like Daenerys I Targaryen, mean, this queen had had carried many titles. Hereditary princess. That Cleopatra was a hereditary princess. Great of praises. I don't know. Sweet of love. I don't know. Lady Grace. Lady, lady of two lands could be Rome and Egypt. It, yeah, this is probably Cleopatra. Okay. I'm glad you pointed that part out. I hadn't read the physical question yet. That's the only thing I've got in here, just because I don't know world history for anything. But I know that that is uh, that. That is a name of a of an Egyptian pharaoh or somebody. So I believe I believe that. So after she consorted with Mark, no, she died with Mark Antony. She was a survivor. She would marry who she had to marry. She would 
do what she had to do to stay to, to maintain power. So I don't remember at what point in this that she would be married to Akhenaten, but I believe that this that's the right answer. Okay. I have no reason to doubt you. All right, we're going to say Cleopatra. Jonathan, when you say Cleopatra is survivor, I just think Cleopatra is Beyonce. (laughs) Jordan and GK, do you want to share what your album title is going to be, Jordan? (laughs) Uh, Sure. My my new album title for my new mixtape is going to be Nefarious Nefertiti. (laughs) Nice, I like it. (laughs) Because Nefarious was my autocorrect that is just, it's being ridiculous today, but we were GK started with uh, started typing it out, and she said like maybe something, and I was like, oh yes. So we went with Nefertiti. I think I'm saying that also, right. Yep, and also it was a TWA calendar question not that long ago. Oh, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, born in Thebes, married to Akhenaten. Your correct answer is Nefertiti. Mm. Nice job. Good job. Sorry, Tony. Uh, oh, Jordan. Bad. Oh, <laughs> I had nothing to contribute, so it's all good. <laughs> Round two, question three. Your category, Tom Cruise's favorite flower. In the year 2021, the state of Mississippi adopted a new state flag with, that centers what flower? It is the official flower a state's official flower, and it is part of the state's nickname. Yeah, you want to go with it? Yeah, we have to. Okay, we'll walk in. Okay, Jordan and GK, you can talk it out. So Mississippi is in the south. <laughs> that's a that's a fact. There's a river there, I hear. I mean, not if you live in Florida. <laughs> Mississippi's in the north for me. Oh, oh, that's right. Because you're in Florida, it's north of Florida. That's that's oh. also. <laughs> I love, I love so. how Jordan waved me off. She's like, <laughs> no. Well, it's it's south for us. It's, we're on a team. Yeah. We're fine. We're yeah. Uh-huh. It's good. So there's there's two flowers that I know of that I associate with the south, and actually, I think one's technically not a flower. One's technically a tree. So magnolias and and uh, the the hickory blossoms. That's the two things I associate with the South when it comes to botany. And I I feel like I so the only reason why I'd be pushing towards magnolia is because um, the steel magnolias, the movie with Julia <laughs> and. Um, uh, that 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 takes place in Mississippi. So that's that's the only reason why I'd go. That that's my logic. If I had to choose one of my two things, and technically, I guess hickory is a tree, and they put hickory in coffee, which it might be a more Louisiana thing, but they're right next to each other. So I don't. I don't. <clears throat> when you said magnolias, I thought immediately of steel magnolias. So there's that. Yeah. Zakia, what was the category name again? Tom Cruise's favorite flower. Would, uh, do you know Tom Cruise's favorite flower? I don't. I don't know. I don't think he was in Steel Magnolias, but <laughs> he was not. He was not. But it was Dolly Parton. Field. The uh, Sally was Sally Fields in there. No, it was like one of Julia so. Roberts' first films that she ever did after. It was like the first one, I think, after Mystic Pizza. Olympia Dukakis, somebody like that. Olympia, Olympia, something. Yeah. There's a bunch of famous people in there from like the eighties. Is, uh, like so. is Tom Cruise's kids named after flowers? Do we know? I have zero idea about anything at Tom yeah, Cruise outside of the movies that he was in. <laughs> I I like Magnolia. Just you know, what's, I can't. Okay. I don't. I'm not going to come up with anything better. Yeah, me neither. Okay, cool. Locked in with Magnolias, I guess. Okay, Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? You know, Tony, it's funny. When you listen to another team talk, sometimes you just wish that they would find other tangents. Like, mm-hmm. she's like, well, that's the tree. If we're accepting trees, I'm like, if you're accepting trees, a southern tree flower would be dogwoods. Come on. Why, why aren't you just talking about dogwoods here? And then you're like talking about magnolia, uh, hickory. Well, that's a tree. I'm like, magnolia is a freaking tree. What, what are we talking about here? But the one thing that was really f- kind of funny for me is the focus on steel magnolias when tom cruise starred in the movie magnolia 
<laughs> so <laughs> when we heard the category, we immediately just wrote down Magnolia. Let her talk about Mississippi and locked in. <laughs> uh, yep, Jonathan's right. Correct answer is Magnolia. Mm-hmm. Also, Sally Field is absolutely is in she? Steel Magnolias. She plays okay. Julie Thank Roberts' you. mom, and she like has all the Sally Field crying acting. That woman is a force. I love her so much. Is Olympia Dukakis mm-hmm. in that movie? I feel like that yes. is... Yes, okay. I get yeah. her I get her screwed around with freaking Michael Dukakis because they have the same last name. <laughs> and it's like, that can't be related. That's, that can't be a real person, can it? Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so at the end of round two, Jonathan and Tony, you have 50. Jordan and GK, you also have 50. All right, good game. Yeah. Let's get into round three, question one. Your category, famous last. You're seeing this right. This iconic Las Vegas casino closed its doors on July 16th, 2024, with one last puff of smoke. Oh, you have heavily confident there, Tony? Heavily. Um, yeah, meow, meow, meow. Ooh, meow, meow. Oh, meow, meow. Uh, we're locked in. <laughs> okay, Jordan and GK, you can talk out loud. So I remember seeing this in the news. I remember it being one of the three casinos that George Clooney and Brad Pitt knocked over in their version of Ocean's Eleven. So it's either the Mirage, the Bellagio, or the MGM Grand. I got okay. those. Th- I have to re- I have to try to remember that news story and which one it is. So crap. I'm coming at this with like the with the one last puff of smoke. It's where the magician. It's oh, if you're doing oh mirage, then would work because yeah. a mirage is a is an optical illusion. I, my original get my original thought was the Luxor, just because I think that's where Chris Angel did his like magic stuff. But like I'm sure I like the mirage better. Okay, then let's go with the mirage locked. All right, Jonathan and Tony, you had Le Meow Meow. 2006, the only time I've been in Las Vegas. I was there for a conference. Beatles Love was playing, so I had to go see that as a show. The only time I've ever sat down at a blackjack table, won any money, you know, so I know this hotel fairly well. Um, Puff of Smoke, yeah, you can do a magic trick. Um, You can also have um, an active erupting volcano outside your... um, uh, you know, outside the hotel. Um, and it's been all over my newsfeed in the last week because I have some people that I know that are from Las Vegas. So we said Mirage. I guess everyone saw this for what it is. It is a Mirage. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, both teams. All right. Round three, question two, your category, water perks, question mark. <laughs> There are massive subterranean water reserves beneath this desert, including the Dragon's Breath Cave in Namibia, which is the largest documented underground lake. Oh, yeah. That is not how you spell that word. <laughs> yeah, are you reading my chat? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's that's the one I would associate. 100%. Oh, 100%. Oh, okay. Well, good. Well, I wasn't there. I, well, be. Hmm. I agree with what you're which saying, though. I, I think we should lock in. I feel like I'm going to come back to Tony for some sub or when, <laughs> when Jordan and GK are done. He's wrong. Uh, let's, got- let, let's let him finish what he's saying. Well, I can't talk as the question's still open, and I have. Yeah. Yes. And I don't, I don't even. Have- I, don't, I don't know that that is. I don't know the relationship between your statement and the real thing. But I'm going to trust that you do, and I'm in. I'm with you. We should lock in, right? Yeah, we can lock in. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan and GK, you can talk aloud. I was just going to ask if you had thunder either way between uh, Sahara or Kalahari. The only thunder I have is that's not how you spell Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That, the only Are you thunder. saying you spell you Kalahari not- right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> wow. Because there's she a because there's a Kalahari resort that keeps on coming up on my ads on like the when I when I try to watch like Paramount Plus or something like that. 
I feel like it's some like some weird thing out in Pennsylvania somewhere in the Poconos. I know those are both deserts in Africa. I forget where Nambia is, though. And I feel like Sahara's in the north, and I feel like Nambia's not in the north. Namibia. But I don't know. Namibia? Nambia? Nambia? Namibia. Namibia. Thank you. Nambia sounds like Zambia, but Nambia, not a place. Fair. It's between the Nambia. Oh, go ahead. No, I was trying to just pronounce the word still. I will learn it. I will pronounce it correctly. I like Kalahari better than Sahara. Okay. For for no reason at all, honestly. Because let's do it. Let's okay. go. Jordan and GK are going Kalahari. Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? So this question is basically, you can take two paths. You can take the geography path where they start talking about a South Africa, well, uh, you know, a desert in Africa. I (laughs) kind of realized that it was Southern Africa. I didn't know the name of the actual desert. So Jonathan 100% sends over the name of a desert in the Southern African continent. But then you could also play Zakia. You can have the Zakia side of the question and you can go back to the category, which I've been writing down every single one because it's... I, I'm, it's going to be traumatic for me, but that's okay. And she said water perks. And that's a wonderful question because you've got these reserves of water underneath and all of that. And if you know me, one thing I do, one thing I do is I travel, you know, I go to theme parks, I go to water parks, I ride roller coasters in 14 different countries. I have a roller coaster right above my head right there. You can't see that home, but that's okay. You have a roller coaster in your house? Well, there's a picture right there. Oh, I okay. I see. I have a no, huge very model cool. like right there too that I'm building. Oh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but all of that, I'm going to connect to what GK said that she sees in her t- in her feed that she gets all of these water park, you know, ads because in the Poconos, one mile from my high school that I teach at in the Poconos, where a lot of my students work, is at one time the largest water park in the world i don't think it is anymore but at one time it was and the name of that water park is kalahari Uh, kalahari is also a a water park chain because there's also one in sandusky ohio which is very close to me which was the inspiration for this question your correct answer is kalahari (laughs) nice job both teams by the way now that we're looking at your background tony i see that your chair is supporting malcolm x (laughs) (laughs) i'm looking like that is i thought it must be a computer or something i'm like that's a that i think that's a chair i thought it was like an xbox or whatnot yep yeah And Jonathan, you said Malcolm X, and I was immediately looking for glasses. I, I no, I was the big um, giant. It's, yeah, there's like a treasure yeah. in the wall behind his chair. <laughs> it is plaster. I could just start accidentally. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, round three, question three. The category is not going to be any use to you because it's Z recites a hit. All right, okay. I've been prepping all week for this. Oh yeah. <sighs> No, I haven't. (laughs) I want you to give me the title of this sleeper hit from 1996. The Swedish band behind the song is largely considered a one-hit wonder, and the appearance of this song on a movie soundtrack caused the band to re-release the single in 1997. And here is the recitation. (laughs) Dear, I fear we're facing a problem. You love me no longer, I know. And maybe there's nothing that I can do to make you do. Mama tells me I shouldn't bother, that I ought just stick to another man. A man that surely deserves me, but I think you do. The band or the the song? Okay, the song. I need the name of the song. All right, I'm going to take my headphones off and think. I don't know if that's right, but that's what I was trying to pull. Mm Mm-hmm. It's definitely better than my guesses. Guess. GK, this is a game changer. You can edit things you've already sent. Yes. In Messenger? <laughs> yes. Because mine autocorrected to something else. But it's not as funny as your autocorrect. Because so, your autocorrect is hysterical. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, okay. Oh, you sound so confident. Okay. Yes. Yes. We're, we're locked in, Zakia. Okay. Jonathan and Tony, you can talk it out. So, Tony, the, the dear, I fear... 
that, that that's that's the way that piece is, Thanks and it stands out really strongly to me. It's, it's Swedish band, but it's not Ace of Base. I don't yeah, know if Sixpence earlier. None the Richer is is Swedish, but I feel like this might be Kiss Me, Kiss Me, da da da. Right, and that's a movie Beneath song. It's around the right twilight. time. Mm-hmm. Lift your hands around it. Yeah, okay. Dude, if you uh, actually don't stop yourself. But I can't s- sing I through can't the chorus sing. and see if you can get to the to the lyric, to the thing. I can't. <laughs> I wish I could, because that's what I was trying to do as I've been staring at these lyrics for the better part of mm-hmm. under five minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I, I'm worried that it's not that that I'm just stuck on that. We're at time. All right. Well, we're at time. That's all we have. I we like have. that the lyrics do kind of lead. It sounds like this is a person who's saying, "Hey, prove that you still love me and kiss me." Like and that. Kiss me. Yeah. That t- totally feels good. Let's go ahead and just say, "Kiss me." Makes sense in a movie context. Yep. All right, Jordan and GK. What did you say? This was all GK. GK pulled this from a movie, and I have never seen the movie. Romeo plus Juliet. This was this was Leo's song with Ju- I forget who played Juliet in Love. Claire Romeo Dane. plus Juliet. Claire Dane. They 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 they. It was like, da-na, da-na, da-na. and I think this is one of the few songs that I try to remember because it always pops up every once in a while in trivia questions, and I always forget the name of it because the name of the song is not in the lyrics. I think it's I think it's Loveful by the Cardigans. The Cardigans. Oh. You said cranberries. Oh no. Well, technically, I think it was a cover. I'm not sure. I think I forget who covered who, but somebody is like, da, na, na, "Love me, da, na, na. love me, say yeah. that you uh, love me, love, need me, need me." Say that you need me. Yeah, you guys want to have a sing along? No, dear, I fear if facing <laughs> a problem, oh, no. you love me no longer. I know, and maybe there is nothing that I can do to make you do, Mama. Yep, <laughs> tells me. Yep. Oh my God! I can't. (laughs) We're trying to get there, Tony. We felt like like another song got in the way of getting there. To be fair, "Kiss Me" was featured in "She's All That," which which is around the time. But your correct answer is indeed "Love Fool" by the Cardigans. Mm. Nice (sighs) job, Jordan and GK. The dear, I fear it was the right. (laughs) <laughs> I was mm-hmm. right there. I had it in my head, and I couldn't get the song. I forgot <laughs> about the existence of the cardigans, though, Tony. That was challenging for that reason. The moment you said '96 I w- and Swedish band, I'm like the cardigans. What the hell did the cardigans write? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Also, by the way, GK Shakespeare expert Shakespeare. She appeared on our Shakespeare uh, After Dark episode. And um, I don't appreciate you asking a question from the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. Thank you very much. That was Dane's idea. <laughs> it, was good. it was a good, good idea. <laughs> so at the end of round three, I hope you guys still love me, love me. <laughs> no, but I need you, need you. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan uh, and Tony, you have 70. Jordan and GK, you have 80. Nice. Your category for the midpoint is the modern pentathlon. Okay. <laughs> I can see so, where this is going. <laughs> yes. The modern pentathlon is an Olympic event introduced in the 1912 Games consisting of five events that were chosen to model the skills needed by a soldier. For four points each, can you name the five events of the modern pentathlon? Right, that's five. One, two, three. Yeah. Zakia, do you need us to be more specific on some of those? Let or will you check. accept those answers? I was planning yeah. on being pretty generous on this, but let me look. Just tell me if you... Because... Mm. Oh, this those are fine. Modern. Those are fine. Okay. Those are fine. Okay. Then we're locked. All right. So 
Tony, I was saying, we've definitely had this before. Twice, I think. And I'm still not good at it. <laughs> I think there's absolutely running. There's probably short distance running and long distance running. Sleeping in a foxhole, surprisingly not an event. There is a shooting event. We got horse something. There is a short, there is a shooting event. I think there is a horse event. I think there is some, some kind of writing because 1912, what a soldier needed to do literally pre-World War, they were just the horses were still involved. Swimming? Swimming. Yeah, sure. So it was a key. How specific do we need to be? Do we need to say the type of event or just like, or do we have to name the damn event or a type of event? No, no, just, just type. I am. Okay. okay. Being so, Tony, I nice. would say <laughs> short distance of so sprinting, more of a long distance running, uh, swimming, shooting, horseback riding. How many is that? Swimming, shooting, horseback is three, and then two runnings. That's five. Do we think jumping is in there? No, I don't. So, one more time slower for me. <laughs> well, I haven't, but we're not, we're not locking it in yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Are there others that could go in there? Right now we're at run short, run long, shoot, swim, horse. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to horse. Got a um, horse. Yeah. It's kind of like beaching. Got to be able to beach. Not sailing, not climbing. Throwing? Do they throw throwing? anything? Yeah, I think throwing might have. I think throwing might be a good one. Like you what throw a throw a javelin or a hammer or whatever. You know. Let's get rid of one of the runs. That would be my vote. So just run. Because we're being so vague anyway that right. So run, throw, swim, shoot, horse. Run, throw, swim, jump, horse, shoot. No shooting. I feel like there's shooting. Shoot. Yeah. Sorry. Don't shoot the horse, but shoot. No, horse. don't shoot the horse. Unless you're really hungry and it's cold. In which case you do what you got to do. You're a soldier. Run, throw, swim, shoot, horse. I yeah. Like the it. only other I can, the only other one I can think of is jump, but I wouldn't know what to even put jump in there for because I don't, mm -hmm. I don't hate any of those other answers. I think we're going to get three of these. All right. You want to lock that in? Sure. All right. We're locked in. A historical context in two different types of historical context. 1912 was right before World War One. Mm -hmm. World War One, you still had cavalry, mm -hmm. and you still had soldiers with swords. Mm. After World War One, swords were no longer equipped to the military, at least in Europe. It was only ceremonial. Therefore, after, so that led me to horseback riding and fencing. So historical number two. Right around the Tokyo Olympics, I forget who it was, either Ben or Carmela mentioned the exact same question. <laughs> One of, I forget who was hosting around the, the, the time around the Tokyo Olympics, we're starting in 2021. But we put swimming, fencing, running, what else? I forget the others that I didn't mention yet. Shooting, uh, fencing, running, shooting, horseback riding, and swimming. Yeah, so Olympics, super topical. I've been watching all the trials and so excited for it. Your correct answers are fencing, mm. swimming, horseback riding, specifically equestrian show jumping, but I'm just, I. you guys said horse, it's fine. <laughs> you tell us we could. We were going to be more specific uh -huh. we had to be. Yeah, no, horse is good. <laughs> Pistol shooting and cross-country running. So I am accepting GK and Jordan. You got it all. Jonathan and Tony, I'm giving you swimming, horse, shooting, and running. Four out of five. That's even better than a meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, yeah, I wasn't going to get into fencing. There's no way. So jumping or throwing or whatever. Yeah, that's all good. On. I mean, that's, that's great there, GK. Wow. Which is, it's c contextually is a really interesting thing, GK. You were talking about it being pre-World War One. I. I was in the same, same mindset, and, but it's interesting because there was a, like a French and Russian war or a French and somebody war in the late 1800s, early 1900s where the French came in on their horses and their colorful uniforms and all of that and got abs maybe it was a German war, absolutely yep. destroyed by machine gun fire. Um, all the horse, everybody died. And you would think that the armies would have learned from that. 
not to come in with your colors and your swords and your horses against these new weapons, but they did not. And so the beginning of World War One was an absolute tragedy. Mm-hmm. It was, I believe, the fall of Prussia, as I believe what you're, it was the Prussians. Prussia, that sounds right. The French right. who, yeah, Prussia versus Prussia, because that, after the fall of Prussia, you get Poland, you get mm-hmm. Austria, you get the Austria, Austria and Hungary separate, you get a whole bunch of that stuff happening. So, yeah. Yep. Cool. So at the end of the midpoint, Jonathan and Tony, you have 86. Jordan and GK, you have 100. All right. Franco-Prussian War. That sounds familiar. Probably that. Yep. Second half of the game, friends. I will warn you, don't look for as many clues in the categories here. I got tired. (laughs) (laughs) And I still am. It's been a week. All right. Round four, question one. Your category is music theory. Music theory. 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 (laughs) This musical notation on sheet music means to play softly as the opposite to forte. It is also the name of a musical instrument. Can't spell to save my life. Mm. Sure, I'm not going to come up with anything better than that. (laughs) I really am not. (laughs) You helped come up with that, (laughs) so... Let's, let's do it. I, I honestly got nothing. If you have something with War Thunder, I'll go with it. But that's the best I'm going to be able to do. You want to lock in, GK? I'm not. I'm literally. I could spend an hour trying to figure it out. I'm not going to get there. <laughs> Zakia, well, we're locked in. We'll let Jonathan and Tony talk. Well, they have seven seconds to do it. We're we're almost at time. <laughs> so, Tony, I'm willing to. I'm I'm willing to take a guess that Fortissimo could be an instrument. And I just like it as being a diminutive form of forte. So if you're saying, okay, forte means loud, bold, then fortissimo could be soft, light. Yeah. Because it's the other guess. It's the opposite pic- version of the word. Yeah. With piccolo and piano, piano forte. I I, I mean, I there I'm just have instruments and I know that those are instruments and words that might mean something, but I, I don't know for sure. Will you go with me on this one? I I can follow you on this one just because I don't feel good about either of my others. All right. Then we will guess Fortissimo. Okay. Jordan and GK, what did you say? I threw out tuba because that sounded great. Um, That's not what we went with. Um, I said it's going to sound French sounding. And GK said probably Italian. And I was like, yeah, that's what I meant. (laughs) And... (laughs) We decided uh, the instrument, we were just going to pick out an instrument and add some letters at the end. And uh, so we went with piano. GK said that ISMO is a popular ending. So we went with piano ISMO. All right. This is piano, t- <laughs> the piano forte, by the way, is an, is the instrument, is the forte instrument. But piano forte means loud piano. Yeah. I, I, it was something I <laughs> heard of. And in the brainstorm, yeah. that's all we had. 10 points to me. I'm going to have one team be very upset. (laughs) Jonathan and Tony, forte means loud. Fortissimo, the issimo is like uh, uh, like throwing gasoline on it. So you want to be even louder than loud. Oh, Oh, no. Why why would Jonathan possibly (laughs) guess that? (laughs) But really, you guys aren't the team that really should be mad. It should be Jordan and GK because the name of the instrument is just piano. Piano means to play softly. Uh, Oh, no, we should be mad. Tony suggested that at the beginning. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Everybody can be mad because the correct answer is just piano. I'm sorry, Tony. That's I had nothing to hide it. Nothing. Sorry, Whatever GK. you wrote down the word piano. It was the first thing out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> You're what? so excited we can't hear the words coming out of your mouth, GK. I'm so angry at myself. I suggested we put letters after it. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I'm sorry. I was just like, well, let's just throw letters on there. <laughs> okay. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> All right, let's shake it off and get into round four. Question to your category is animals. Animal. Animal. Animals. All right. 
also known as the carcajou or the quick hatch, this carnivore native to the northern parts of North America and Eurasia gets its scientific name, Gulo Gulo, from its gluttonous tendencies. It's one of the meanest things anybody's ever called me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's how you pronounce that word. Meow meows. Oh, oh. That? oh meow meow. Meow. I didn't know that's how you pronounce that word, but meow meows. <laughs> okay. Tony, so the word hatch typically ends up on birds. Like a quick hatch, like a nut hatch. It's a bird, right? I'm sure, yeah. Um, I am not this kind of biologist, so if you're looking for me for any of this, my I've dude, got nothing. Come on. <laughs> I am Come a molecular on. biologist. I told you the DNA. All I told right. you the genetics. All right, all right, all right. I'm right. not an outside biologist. I'm an inside biologist. All right, well, let's think about Hatch, it. So, I mean, anything with eggs. So, I mean, maybe we bring in, you know, some reptiles or something, but birds scientifically could be considered reptiles. But Okay, so that's cool. Northern parts of North America would be Arctic regions and northern Canada. Right. Or, and I mean, I could be northern parts of North America if you're comparing me against, you know, Mexico. Yeah, I think I think this is going to be an Arctic ty- kind of thing or a, a cold weather kind of thing, specifically. Yeah. Gulo, gulo. Nothing. Carcajow. Carcajow. Quick hatch. Car- are there any? Are there any? Well, there's absolutely no reptiles the further you get north. They're no. blooded. They wouldn't Correct. want yeah. to be there. So I think it's a bird, quick hatch carnivore, maybe like a vulture of some sort. Gluttonous, gluttonous tendencies. What's an animal up in those parts that's gluttonous? Is it something that could possibly be in the water? That's true, yeah. The Greenland shark, not gluttonous. Uh, Gluttonous meat eater. It's got to be a bird. Are albatrosses Arctic? No, I think of them... More tropical, rhyme of the watch, ancient mariner. I watched a video the other day. The most populous bird in in the oceanic regions was some kind of p word, a pelfrey, or a maybe this is like a pelican or something like that. No, that's not. That's not northern though. No, northern North America and Eurasia. Yeah, that mm-hmm. doesn't scream pelican. Vulture isn't bad. Penguins are Antarctica, so it's not a penguin. Correct. Vultures are everywhere. What about a a buzzard and a vulture? Are very similar. The gluttonous clue makes me think vulture, but I mean, if we're choosing between those two, I have I don't know. We are at time. Kingfisher, blue-footed booby, puffin. Give me an answer. I'm going <laughs> vulture. I, I I vote vulture. Vulture. All right, Jonathan and Tony are locking in Vulture, Jordan and GK. What did you say? So neither of you are comic book fans, are you? Oh, no. I am. So, as you know, there is a big rival between DC and Marvel. Sure. And DC actually made a joke about this when, uh, uh, in like the 90s at some point when Wolverine came back into like popularity mm-hmm. with the X-Men movies. I did not know that's how car- that's how you pronounce the car 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 but but that is a wolverine. <laughs> really? We, it, 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 yeah, it's a wolverine. Oh god. We we forgot. We forgot it's Zakia. We forgot. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I literally, literally use the phrase, you have to play the question and the knowledge, and you have to play Zakia's game. It's <laughs> Okay, so let's hear the answer. Um, yeah, the Karkaju, Quick Hatch, Gulo Gulo, it is indeed a Wolverine. And there's many ways you could play this. To Zakia, I, I work for the University of Michigan. Wolverines, <laughs> here, answer me this so because annoyed. this is the the we we could have absolutely come up with Wolverine, the quick hatch. That's literally it's, like the thing that pulled us away from mammals. It is called a quick hatch. Why? I don't know. The hell kind of name is quick hatch? 
I didn't name it. I if I were naming the Wolverines, I wouldn't call it something mean like a goo goo. That's, like, that's <laughs> like calling me fast bird. I'm neither fast nor a bird. Yeah. I want to know. I wanna, I'm going to look that up. I want to know that. Why is a Wolverine called a quick? It's not even a suggested word. <laughs> The Wolverine, also called the Mountain Devil, the Quick Hatch, the Carcajou, and the Skunk Bear, is a cantankerous and sometimes vicious animal. Skunk Bear, awesome word. Love that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But why is it called a Quick Hatch? I, I don't know. But I do also know that if you Google, I don't know if you've ever heard of the TV show Gullah Gullah Island. If you if you have a typo, if you have a, a autocorrect computer, like... Jordan and me seem to have. We type in Gula Gula Islands. You actually say, "Do you, does it mean Gala Gala?" But the first Google search is actually like Wolverines. <laughs> so the only reference to Quick Hatch is Wolverine-based stuff, but nobody explains it. Yeah, no, it's just like a bad name. <laughs> yeah, it's a Quick Hatch. Maybe the hatch is related to its mouth, right? And it opens really quickly to gulo gulo all the food. <laughs> Maybe its gestation period is very short. Does it eat eggs? Does it, you know, does it quickly snatch up hatching uh, other thing? I don't know. It okay. The University. It's, of, it's oh, it comes God. from a native word. First recorded in uh, the 1600s. Earlier, quikwa hatch. So I'm betting that this. It's also called a kinkajou. I'm betting that quikwa hatch probably means something else completely, but it sounded like quick, mm. and they just turned it into that. So there quick we go. Hatch. I am so sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's a great question. It's a real thing. I mean, just because mm-hmm. we don't like you anymore doesn't mean you're bad. <laughs> Well, save all of your disdain for the Michigan Wolverines. I, They are my employer, but I am still a Spartan for life. All right. I think you mean the Michigan Quiqua Hatches. <laughs> <laughs> Round four, question three. Your category is burials. Burials. B-U-R-I-A-L-S. However that is pronounced. Burials. In, in your region. <laughs> On May 20th, 1998, Frank Sinatra was laid to rest in Cathedral City, California, allegedly with a pack of cigarettes and this, oddly enough, what Kasha claimed to brush her teeth with. I've got some thunder, GK. You have thunder. Ooh. Oh, wait on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If they don't have thunder, I might have some toot toots on this. I don't have toot toots with me. Oh no! My whistle is uh, we moved. I don't know where the whistle is, but I'll give it to everybody. <laughs> I already, I already had the meow meow, so I wanted to do the toot toots. GK, you shouldn't meow. paste in the, wrong in the chat, Skype wrong chat. chat. Wrong chat. I don't know nope. what you're talking about. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most convoluted set of answers anyway. <laughs> We're Tony and I are locked <laughs> in. <laughs> Too late. We're locked in. You can talk. Uh, yeah, so, so, Kesha, Ke- so, so, what's yeah. the song? TikTok. TikTok, what's TikTok. the song? Bottle of Jack. That, brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack. Because when I leave from the night, I ain't coming back. I got my pedicure on my toes. Toes, toes. toes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not your yeah. Kesha fan. Jack, Jack Daniels Whiskey. If you want to be specific, or do you want to just go with with Jack Daniels, or do you want whiskey? Which one do you want to lock in with? I think Jack, because that's the lyric in the Kesha bottle of Jack. Okay. It's the actual lyric. So, Okay. Bottle of We're going to lock in with Jack. Up. All right. Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? Yeah, with the Kesha clue, I was immediately there. I've seen her twice live, so a bottle of Jack, and we could say Jack Daniels or whatever. However else you need it, but I think we're all there. Uh, your correct answer is indeed a bottle of Jack. <laughs> nice job. So at the end of round four, Jonathan and Tony, you have 96. Jordan and GK, you have 120. I 
goodness. Round five, question one. I am so, I'm so sorry. This was, this was a high idea of a, a question. So we're just going to work with it. Your category is art thoughts. If the Ninja Turtles were their actual artist counterparts, who would be the oldest? <sighs> the oldest would be born in 1386 in Florence and would die before the youngest two were born. Not how you spell it. Don. Maron. Maron. I, I like it, GK. It was between him and uh, the other one. one and, the, and if you have a. If you have thunder on that, I, I like that answer. It was between him and I had another one, but. Mm-hmm. Locked. Okay. okay. So Michelangelo is going to be the youngest. He was a young man in the 1500s. Uh, da Vinci lived in the, f- like, like he didn't die until the 1500s. I'm pretty sure he might've been born in the mid to late 1400s. Raphael was a painter um, high Renaissance. He was one of the early big names in the High Renaissance with the Pietas, lots and lots of Pietas and a certain color palette that he used everywhere. But once again, that's High Renaissance stuff. That's 14 and 1500s. Donatello was the odd man out. He was a sculptor. He wasn't even a, really a painter. And I'm betting money that he'd be the one that was born 100 years before everybody else. I have been to Florence, Italy. I could name the Ninja Turtles, but I would be choosing and I'd have a complete 25% chance of getting this correct. So if you think it's Donatello and you have that knowledge, then I am definitely following your lead. All right. I hope, I mean, I hope it's not Raphael, but we're going to say Donatello. Jordan and GK, what did you say? So So. the first thing I said was we have a 25% chance here. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I was thinking between Donatello and Raphael, and then GK said Donatello, and she said it twice. And I was like, okay, she knows. So we went with Donatello. I, I have so many thoughts. Okay. So the youngest, born in 1483, is Raphael. Oh. The next, yes. Whoa. The next, yeah. The next youngest, born in 1475, is Michelangelo. The second oldest, born in 1452, is Leonardo da Vinci, making the oldest, born in 1386, Donatello. And according to GK, he's also the oldest of the turtles. How do you know this? No, no, no. I, he's not. Leonardo's the oldest of the turtles. I, <laughs> that, that was me misremembering. I thought Donatello was the oldest for a really long time because I learned in AP art that Donatello came before Leonardo da Vinci because mm. apparently that's how my art teacher in high school got us kids interested in art history. So Which was, was with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So fair. That is incorrect and information. Jordan, I'm going to have to ask you offline about the Lush collection because I just saw an ad for that. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, okay. They have little soaps inside of the turtle heads, and uh, the one that I just used had a little skateboard soap in it. It was great. They're taking over my life. I will explain on another <laughs> time. But let's move to round five, question two, your category, German words. In German, a Seeleklempner directly translates into a plumber of the soul. That is what occupation? Pronounce that word again in German? Seal. It's Seele Klempner. I mean, do you want to keep throwing out ideas, Tony, or do you just want to go with what our gut is? It's it's going to be in this area, in, in that area. I just don't know what specific, how we should, what word we should land on. Okay. Since. All right. So we want to lock that in? Yeah, I think so. All right. We're going to lock in. Okay, Jordan and GK, you can talk it out. Okie doke. So I suggested maybe priest, and GK came back with poet or psychologist. Psychologist. I don't feel great about it. priest. That was just no, kind so, of my. Yeah, no, I, I, but like all three of them, like dig into your soul. Like I, I, I'm really pushing on the plumber so a plumber to me fixes problems of the soul a priest certainly does that a poet certainly discovers one's soul and a psychologist obviously 
I don't know. Either any of them sound good to me. I, any of those three. German translations from what like from what I have seen are normally very literal. So out of yeah. the three that we've come up with, I like psychologist the best. Really? I don't really think poet that just doesn't line up for me. I mean, I get where okay. you came from with like the soul and the Okay. I got that. I, I wasn't I confident that. with priest when I threw that out there, but a well, priest is always a good one, right? Because like your soul, it's a very religious thing, right? Germany being primarily Christian nation. Germany was once called the Holy Roman Empire. So, you know, it fixes your soul for God. That makes between that and psychologist who literally, you know, talks to you about yourself all day. All right, time, friends. Or, I'll like go with whatever you want. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's do that. Psychologist, Akia. Okay. okay. Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? Something similar. Yeah, we had priests down, but our first um, ideas were going therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, you know, plumbing the soul, seal, meaning soul in German, for my anime fans for Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh -huh. uh, we landed on psychiatrist. So I am going to say both of you are correct. Salen Klempner is basically the German word for a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> so a psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, anything along those lines would have been acceptable. So good job, both teams. Yeah, I'm glad that we didn't have to be perfect on that one then. Oh, yeah. no, 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 How no, do no, I no, tell no, the no, difference no. between a psychiatrist <laughs> and, a and, a, and, a, and a psychologist in this context? No, 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 no. Round five, question three, your category names the same. Okay. <laughs> This English philosopher, who served as the Attorney General under King James I and was an early promoter of the scientific method, shares his name with a 20th century artist known for his philosophy of brutality of fact, depicting humans as carcasses and other darker images. Neither of them made pancakes for Jake. Locked in. Jordan and GK, you can talk it out. 30 seconds. So there's there's two tw there's two philosophers that come to my brain, and with now that you mentioned Adventure Time, it's making me think in bacon pancakes, and uh, Francis yeah. Bacon. Francis Bacon was a hundred percent around during the reign of James the first. Francis Bacon would be because bacon pancakes, bacon bacon pancakes, bacon pancakes, bacon bacon pancakes. But I don't think he was ever the attorney general for anybody Time. but Francis Bacon. Let's go. Let's go. With that, GK. Ba Francis Bacon, because I can't think of who the attorney general was for James the First, who was Scottish. All right. Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? Oh, dear. Well, there was your Adventure Time thing, Tony. I, There's the Adventure I couldn't Time. I go, there. is this Adventure Time? I go, yeah, because if I know anything about Adventure Time, it's the it's the bacon pancakes. And I had no idea. I was trying to think of what the characters' names were. One is Jake. I was like, it was the dog thing. I've never seen it. I have no idea anything about Adventure Time. So we just started throwing out English philosophers, Calvin and Hobbes and, and Locke and all of these other people. I mean, yeah, it, uh, we locked in with Hobbes. The scientific method clue was killing me as a science teacher, but I had nothing there. But the, the bacon pancake, it's got to be bacon. It can't be anything else. So Kia, yeah. <laughs> and I, no one took it from the art angle, but I am glad that you guys remember Jake the dog from <laughs> Adventure Time, because the correct answer is indeed Francis Bacon and bacon pancakes. Bacon, Wait, bacon he pancakes. Was so, so Hobbes, Locke, and them were 18th century. They were about 100 years after Francis Bacon, plus or minus a few. Oh, listen, none of us have that level of knowledge. You're barking up the wrong tree, Jake. Round six, question one. Your category is legendary practices. The name for this oldest Mesoamerican civilization translates from Nahuatl as rubber people, referring to this group's practice of extracting natural latex from rubber trees that was passed down to the Aztecs. It's not confirmed, but I don't think the silver monkey statue was made from rubber. <laughs> Thunderclaps! Oh, go! Oh, uh, uh, no! oh, okay, right. big thunderclaps! Lock it. Lock you it. can talk out Jonathan loud, and Tony. Tony. You, can, you can talk it out. Tony, so there's a people's... Oh, what do you got here? 
Oh, well, I was just saying that the monkey, the silver monkeys, of course, were the legend of the hidden temple. Um, so the big stone guy is Oltec, Olmec. Is it Olmec? Olmec. I, I, I don't, I don't know the hidden temple thing. I yeah. know that we're talking about a people that came before the Incas, the Aztecs, or the Mayans. I think the word is Olmec. Okay, Olmec. if you know M, M or N, that is a thing. Oltec, Olmec, I don't I've, think is a yeah. thing. That was just what once I heard the is the uh, legend of the hidden temple. But yeah, I mean, if yeah, it's that uh, old mech uh, makes more sense to me. I think it's in old mech. I think the M, the M sounds M? better. Right. Yeah, once you said that, that clicked better. I mean, I was initially wrong with old tech, but old mech is definitely sounding better in my head than neck. Yeah, old old tech is like USB three point oh, <laughs> iPhone one. <sighs> yeah. Okay, we're going to say the Olmecs. Olmec. All right, Jordan and GK, you had Le Meow Meow. What did you say? Yeah, uh, the Legends of the Hidden Temple. When you said Silver Monkey Statue, I'm like, oh, Olmec is named after a indigenous civilization in South America from back in the day. And it's it was my favorite game show as a kid, and I always wanted to go to space camp. <laughs> so that's, yeah, Olmec. Yeah, your correct answer, Old Mac. Nice oh, job. Good. Round six, question two, your category, Olympic firsts. Weightlifter Heidelin Diaz became the first ever Olympic medalist in any sport from this country after she set Olymp- an Olympic record with a 127 kg clean and jerk at the to- Tokyo Olympics in 2021. That's that's kind of what I was thinking, GK. Honestly. Okay. That ex- that exact spelling too. Yep. <laughs> it just spelled wrong. Yeah. The key over lock. All right, Jonathan and Tony, you can talk it out. I mean, it's a sound. I believe it's the female weightlifter, right? And I yeah, and I I mean, North Korea was the first thing in my head, just because it's like, oh, well, it'd be the first gold medal. It would be whatever, but that name does not obviously scream yeah this has got to be hispanic i'm i'm throwing out mexico as a serious option i'm not aware of mexico winning gold medals and anything else philippines you said i, I philippines, mean philippines anything in south america that's not portuguese i honestly don't know i if i was alone i'd probably guess mexico yeah i i don't have anything anywhere the category else, so. was weightlifting or olympic first olympic first do you want to go to Mexico or do you want to go to Philippines? I like Philippines more just because there's less of a chance for them to have a gold medal. I would, th- I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I, I honestly, I got nothing here. So either way, it's fine by me. I like Philippines. All right. We'll go Philippines. All right. Jordan and GK, what have you been saying? <laughs> a lot of curse words. <laughs> you got this one, Jordan. You, you went there. I, I knew it was a South Asian country, and we threw out the Philippines, and then we were cursing you guys and hoping you would stay in Mexico <laughs> and stay there, but you didn't. You went, you <laughs> made it the last second, so we went with Philippines. For the record, Mexico has 13 gold medals. <laughs> Your cur- I'm glad we didn't go Mexico, Tony. It sounds like that was the wrong answer. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Your correct answer, R. The Philippines. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you for throwing it out. <laughs> you got the, you got the ball started. I gave it a little nudge and kept it fair. I don't know. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I'll be your editor. You can just throw out all the stuff you want and I'll just edit and get, get us there. You guys, I mean, I know it seems like that. W- you have no idea how f- much of a random ass guest that was. Truly. That was... So not knowledge based. It was based on the last think... name, and it's like okay, Spanish places, and... and that's why I thought Diaz was too obvious for Hispanic country. That's the first thing I threw out is that Diaz. That is that mm-hmm. I feel like a Hispanic country would be too obvious, especially since you know Mexico hosted the Olympics well, at least once. So oh, you think I... they got the home field advantage, gold medal on yeah. something? Mm. Yeah. So All right. I don't know. Round six, question three. Your 
Round six, question three, your category, directors. What is the alliterative name of the American auteur from Albuquerque, known for his work with A24 in the horror genre? His films include The Strange Thing About the Johnsons, Hereditary, Midsommar, and Bo is Afraid. You got the wrong partner for this question, Tony. Oh, boy. Strange things about the Johnsons. Oh, yes. All right, I know. I've got Meow yes. Meow, but I can't think of yes. his last name. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's his last name. Oh, I've you... got Meow Meow's on the first name. Meow! Are you locked in? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, Tony. I'm going to... St- I'm going to start playing them for a second. Why would they have Meow Meow's on his first name? Does that mean it, that he has Mitsumar a unique enough- Midsommar feels like some kind of Danish thing. Some kind of, some kind of was, Scandinavian vibe. Yeah, right? it was definitely set there. Very bright. Very, uh, you know. Um, I've never even heard of the other three. Oh, Hereditary is a trip. That is. I'm that is. not a horror person at all. Then Never do really not be. watch Hereditary. No, <laughs> thanks. I'm good. No, 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 no. It'll. So yeah. I can give you a horror director, Richard Rodriguez or something like that. That's a guy. Yeah, That's he wouldn't do. He, he wouldn't have done these new ones and he wouldn't be in like 824. It's okay. He would be producing his own things. Quentin um, Quarantino. <laughs> um. Why would they meow meow the first name? I don't think it's going to get me there, but that's probably not the way to go. Then who, uh, Oh, here's a question for you. Who directed Midsommar? Uh, Well, I mean, if I knew that we'd be, we'd have the answer. Um, Maybe if you just ask it the right way, then it'll pop up for you. Take the hard part out. The alliterative author, Albuquerque. Hans Hunkelbrook. Mads Mickelson, Thor Thorinson. <laughs> this is, yeah, unfortunately, there's not enough here for me to be able to answer this. I would have to tap, and we can say Rodriguez just, you know, we're not going to not say something, but I don't have any modern horror directors. Like I said, I've definitely seen these two Hereditary at Home, Midsummer in the Theater. I like Alvin I, Allenson. I, Paul Peopleman, Al Bukerke. <laughs> I got, I mean, I got nothing, dude. No, I, like I said, I would have to tap on this one and we can just say Rodriguez not to leave it blank, but. All right, we're going to say Rodriguez. Okay, Jordan and GK, you got the first name. <laughs> Did you get the last name? We did. We went with Ari Aster. The mm. reason I knew his first name was because there's a comedian named Ari Schaffer or something. I I I uh, listen to him all the time. But uh, I worked in a Suncoast video for about seven years, so I mm. go see a movie once a week. I saw Midsummer three times in theaters. Um, so we're confident on this answer. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and Tony, you picked up on mm-hmm. something else I put in the question. Alliterative, hey, hey, American, hey. auteur, Albuquerque, A24, because his name yeah. is Ari Aster. Nice job, Jordan and GK. Tony, I wish I could have helped you there, man. I didn't, I've, I'd never heard that name in my life. <laughs> I mean, with, without a star clue from, from Zaki, I was never getting to Aster. Uh, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> John like I said, Jacob. I, unfortunately uh, it's just not something i picked up with those movies because trust me if you saw those movies the last thing you're taking out of them is oh the director's name you'd be like oh no i'm gonna go and see how i cannot be you know unpack all this trauma that just happened to me so <laughs> and learn his name so you get traumatized all over again mm. <laughs> so at the end of round six Jonathan and Tony, you have 136. Jordan and GK, you have 180. The category for your gauntlet is not quite Mortal Kombat. I think we locked in our score or wager, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Our wager, our wager is locked in. Question one of your gauntlet, the category, not quite Mortal Kombat. 
This composer of 4 minutes 33 seconds, an experimental modernist piece of music, stated that the inspiration behind it was his studies of Zen Buddhism. There ain't a damn piece of clue in there for me. Oh, no. And you're looking for the composer name? I'm looking for the composer. The second one. Okay. Second one. Locked. Yeah, I, I knew it was one of the two. It's the second one. No, your answer is locked in? Mm-hmm. So we're locked in. We're locked in with this one. Yes. Okay. Locked in. Cool. Question to your gauntlet. Forget-me-nots are also known as this type of grasses, sharing a name with a type of predatory arthropod. Oh. Stop knowing things, GK. Meow, meows. Meow, meows. Meow, meows. <laughs> meow! <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think we got to go with the first thing you said. Even though it, yeah, I think we got to go to the first thing you said. Just banking that we have the the category clue. I'm pretty correct. sure we do. I'm pretty sure we do. I just don't have a deep knowledge. <sighs> yeah, I mean, we have to bank on knowing the category. Let's do it, dude. Okay, so we're locked in with my first question. Guess there. Yep. Your... We are. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're locked in. <laughs> Great. All right. Question three of your gauntlet. Technically, this decorative stone can be any color, but we mostly associate it with the color green. It appears frequently in art in East Asia, the Pacific Islands, and Mesoamerica. Yeah, we're locked in for sure, Tony. <laughs> yes. We, yeah, we, we're good. I'm, I'm good with you on that. Okay. Uh, Jordan NGK, you can talk it out if you like. Jade is 100% a Mortal Kombat character, and every single answer is a Mortal Kombat character name. So, yes, Jade is 100% the answer. Perfect. You sure you don't okay. have a periwinkle? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. you also have to say our answer is locked in, one of you. Oh, our, our answer is locked in. Great. Cool. All right. It's time to collect the answers. So let's go to question one. Who is the composer of 4 minutes, 33 seconds, that experimental piece of modernist music? Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? Well, we started throwing down names for what we think the category was, and the only one that looked like a possible last name of an experimental, silent, 4-minute, 33-second piece of music, we just chose Cage. Not Nick Cage necessarily, but it might be, but we just said Cage. Okay. Uh, Jordan and GK, what did you say? So I threw out John Kane and then John Cage, and GK jumped in and said Cage, definitely. So we went with John Cage. Okay. Uh, question two. Forget-me-nots are also known as this type of grasses, sharing a name with a pr type of predatory arthropod. Jordan and GK, what did you say? Jonathan, what is your star sign? I am Scorpio. As am I. My favorite character to play in the Mortal Kombat arcade at the YMCA was Scorpion. <laughs> As a result. <laughs> Scorpion was our answer. And Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? I never heard of scorpion grasses. I thought crab grasses is the thing I've heard of. So why the hell couldn't there be a scorpion grass, right? We just said, get over here to a correct answer and put scorpion. <laughs> <sighs> And finally, technically, this decorative stone can be any color, but we mostly associate it with the color green. Jonathan and Tony, what did you say? That's jade. It was jade, 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 jade. <laughs> and Jordan and GK, what did you say? We also went with jade. Okay, I so... really wanted them to miss one, Tony. was really looking forward to them not being confident on at least one of them. <laughs> well, the only thing I'm keeping my fingers crossed is they put a first name to that first question. So if that first name is wrong, maybe we got a chance. <laughs> yeah, you have to juggle with Linus Cage. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go from the beginning. This composer of four minutes, 33 seconds is indeed John Cage. Cage wow. is uh, the correct answer. Two forget-me-nots are also known as scorpion grasses. Mm. Nice job. And the, the 
decorative stone that is mostly green appears in the East Asian Pacific Islander and Mesoamerican art is jade. So both teams got the gauntlet. Good job. <laughs> Tony, one of our possible chances of winning has disappeared by them not missing anything. <clears throat> nope, nope, nope. Doesn't so feel with good. that, you two were trailing. What did you end up wagering? We figured that they would go for a lockout because it was a simple wager of 93 for them. If we bet 46, that would give us a chance to climb ahead of the 180 if they did bet zero or stay ahead of them if we both missed it. So we bet 46. Bringing your score to 182. Jordan and GK, you said in the chat, can I reveal something sure. about your wager? So you guys said, or one of you said, you are all or nothing type people. What did you end up doing? We went, we went it all. We're, if we're going to lose, we're going to go out with our boots on. So we went, we went full throttle. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. If they so had missed fight. it, we would have won either way. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So the final score of 182 to 360, Jordan and GK, you are the winners of this game. Nice job. That was an unnecessarily large score. (laughs) Jonathan, it also comes down to I can't do math. So Mm. when I go to trivia with my friends at the bar and it comes down to wagering time, Mm -hmm. I'm left out of the conversation because I say, let's go. Let's go. All or nothing. Let's let's bet it all. Mm. Me and Jordan were just vibing today. Let me tell you. We vibing. You guys absolutely destroyed it stayed strong Mm -hmm. in the second half on a challenging second half that was well well done uh and before we go we'd like to give everybody a chance to do shout outs and promote causes that they care about jordan why don't we start with you Uh, sure as always please please go to your primary care doctor it is very important that you do preventative maintenance on yourself not just important for your vehicle Because early detection is the key for most things. I'd also like to shout out to Ghostbusters Virginia. We do charity work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So they are a lovely charity if you'd like to support them. And then the Chesapeake Ghostbusters. We do the Ark of Southern Maryland and the Ark of Baltimore. We help people with intellectual and physical disabilities. All right, I'm off my soapbox now. Those are my... I love your soapbox. Go give yourself an oil change, folks. Preventative maintenance. Absolutely (laughs) valid and... What a wonderful charity. It's very cool and great job working with those for sure. All right, GK, you're up. Support local art. Go see your local community theater. Go to a local art gallery. Do something with your local art because art is how society thrives and you should support it. So go do B with your local art. Love it. Absolutely agree. And Tony, over to you. As a high school teacher, I just want to kind of talk up some programs, you know, that students can get involved in. I'm personally involved with a creative problem solving program called the Odyssey of the Mind. There's ways for everybody to get involved. You don't need to have, you know, a student, you know, a child in the school. We're always looking for judges and things. And, you know, a couple Saturdays, uh, you know, and you could make a difference for, you know, and help these kids, um, you know, become better members of society by doing, um, you know, art, which is a huge component of it, but also engineering and teamwork and cooperation and problem solving. It goes from, you know, kindergarten, first grade, all the way through college. Uh, You know, hopefully there's some places in your area for Odyssey of the Mind or anything at your schools, volunteer for things, you know, help out. You know, the kids are our futures. They're going to be taking care of us at some point, you know, and that's what um, we should do. I love it. God, I would have loved to have you as a teacher when I was in school. That would have been awesome. Hard agree. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that is going to wrap us up. So for Jordan, for GK, for Tony and Zakia, my name is Jonathan, and this has been episode number 490 of Trivial Warfare, where it's not just trivia, it's war. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Trivial Warfare. Be sure to check out the revamped TrivialWarfare.com as your one-stop shop to submit questions, join the community, and get access to over 150 archived episodes. Warm It Up was written and performed by Matthew Stevens. This episode was edited and produced by me, Joel Sharpton. For help with your podcast, 
visit propodcastingservices.com. My autocorrect just autocorrected the word my to KY in all caps. So I think, I think that we're on the same There's page. There's only one here. reason that would be saved in your memory there. Bro, it changes is to I to every time. My autocorrect is an <laughs> It's just pulling from your shopping list. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I guess I'm a little jelly of your uh, oh!